When we talk about government surveillance and government control and use of the internet, one of the terms that comes up frequently is something called metadata. So what is metadata? Metadata can be thought of as information about a communication that is not the contents. So let me give you an example. I send an email to you. That email has a body. I say, you know, hi, uh, I'm going to spell his name right. Hi, Greg, you know, here's a new cat, um, a new cat picture, whatever. Um, new I can spell okay so I so this is the content the, the con you know this would be considered the contents of the email whatever I've typed into uh, the text box um, metadata could be you know who I sent the email to um, where the email came from that's me um, the subject of the email um, so so this part um, cats obviously this part is um, this part is metadata so this is the information that is not the content of the communication, that's the body of the message, but it is metadata about the message. So if you look at the raw email, uh, there's lots of parts at the beginning where that, the email actually carries a lot of metadata. It carries information about all the servers that touched it, uh, timestamps, all sorts of stuff. So that's, the, that's metadata. Um, now, in certain cases, there were government surveillance programs that were authorized to collect and process metadata about communications on the internet um, in ways that people thought weren't necessarily particularly legal or constitutional. So I can collect lots of metadata, I can mine that metadata to try to find out information. And, and the way you're, that you're justifying this is you're saying, well, I'm not looking at the content. So I never read your email. Um, I just kept track of everyone you were communicating with, when you sent messages, the subject of those communications, and other types of information. But unfortunately, that information can paint a very powerful picture about people. Let me use a different example. So, one of the specific programs that we know a little bit about, uh, thanks to Edward Stone and other people, um, was a program where the United States government was cooperating with cell phone providers to collect metadata about cell phone communications. And this gets a little bit technical, but it's kind of interesting. So anytime you place a call with your phone or send or receive a text message, you communicate with a tower. So let's say I'm here, I'm, I'm within the range of this one tower, and I send you a text message. So in order to send that text message, I have to talk to the tower. And there's some paging uh, information, which is what it's referred to, that's exchanged with the tower. Um, and so I send a little text message, or I place a call. Now, when I place a call, uh, as long as the call continues, let's say I move, so I'm in my car, um, there's also uh, sort of a stream of information that's, um, that, that's exchanged. Um, but actually, when I hang up the call, there's another message that's sent to the tower. Now, the interesting thing about this information, so this is metadata. This is not the content of the conversation. I'm not recording your conversations. But the reason that the cell phone companies keep this information is actually not to help the government. It's for billing. So I know how long you talked on the phone. I know when your call started and ended. I know how many text messages you sent, things like this. This is the reason that these uh, cell phone providers were, were uh, we're collecting this data. This is why they had these big databases with all this information in it. So they would have a database that would have, every time you placed a text message, it would have um, the fact that you placed a text message, not the contents of the message, but it would have information about what tower you had exchanged the message with. OK, so that's the metadata. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, you know, again, you might say, well, the government's actually not eavesdropping on my conversations. They don't know the contents of my message. Um, but this information can give us a lot. Now, let's. Uh, also point out the fact that it also that metadata also uh, exposes information about who I'm communicating with but let's just look at it spatially so these towers you know the radius of a tower is a couple kilometers so every time you use your phone in this way you're exposing where you are on a pretty a pretty coarse grained uh, at a pretty coarse granularity this isn't like GPS level accuracy I just know that you're within range of a particular tower but if I, can, if I uh, use that information over time, it turns out that I can you know, determine things probably like where you live, uh, where you work. Because 
you know, I can see you, you know, starting off in the morning, maybe you send some text messages from home and then you drive to work and then you're over here and you send some text messages at work. And over time, I can build up a coarse grained profile of your movement. I can, you know, find out you know, potentially where you are. Um, and so this is one of these examples of how metadata can be so powerful. I don't need to know who you, you know, the content of your conversation. I don't need to know the contents of your text message. But if I know who you're communicating with and I know where those communications originate, I can build up potentially a pretty interesting profile of you that might expose a lot of information that we wouldn't uh, feel comfortable exposing. So this is, this is you know, one example of a very specific program. Now, according to uh, what we know, the government is no longer doing this. They were told to stop and they're no longer collecting this sort of information from cell uh, providers. But this uh, program went on for, for quite a few years.